Hi, good morning everybody. This is Brittany here at Big Cat Rescue in Tampa, Florida. Please take a second and share this. I started, I try to start these early so that people who actually do get notifications can then share and tag each other for those of us that don't get notifications. Um, I definitely intend to show you guys our two birthday cats. Yesterday was Simba Tiger, today is Jasmine. But first, I figured we'd take a second and check in on Miss Alethea. Alethea came back outside on Monday, I believe. Yeah, it was Monday. I volunteered yesterday. And no staff meeting today, so I don't have to feel in a big rush. <laughs> She's back to her usual. Hi, honey. How are we feeling? As I mentioned, Alethea over the weekend was acting not her usual self, wasn't eager to eat. We sent out a fecal sample and discovered that she had spirometra, which is not super uncommon for a cat like her that likes to catch lizards and such. she got treated for that and brought back outside she'll get retreated in three weeks so we know she's gonna be much happier out here than in the recovery cabana so here's Miss Alethea doing just fine <laughs> back in her favorite spot underneath the Kuluru you know a lot of you guys are having snowstorms uh, so stay safe stay warm here it's it's a very blustery, windy day again, so any of our open-air cats have already been closed into roof sections this morning. So thank you again for sharing this. Again, this is Brittany at Big Cat Rescue in Tampa, Florida. Just starting a little walkabout for you guys. I'm very excited this coming Monday I'm going to be speaking to a class at Ohio University uh, just over Zoom. I'd love to go back to OU, um, just not this time of year. <laughs> I'd like to go back in the fall. But my husband is an alumni there and one of his professors reached out to me and has asked me to speak to a class. Um, that I am, I've not done that before and I'm super excited about it. So I was trying to gather together my bio, which is almost like a resume, <laughs> like just so I can give them some general information about me and how I got started and how in the world I ended up with um, a dream job like this. So, but it was funny because she emailed me this morning and she's like, well, today's a snow day because we're getting a lot of terrible weather and I was like oh yep that's all I'm seeing in my in my timeline um, on Facebook is everybody getting snowed in today I do kind of miss snow days in a weird way I, I don't miss uh, having to travel in that weather if I'd had the opportunity to like work from home or just be a stay at home anything during winter I maybe wouldn't have hated it as much because it sure is pretty it does help you kind of take it slow I miss all the, the uh, warm weather or yeah cold weather comfort foods I guess you could say in Florida it's like so few and far in between but hurricanes to me down here end up making it feel like snow days <laughs> when you kind of supposed to stay home and hunker down, but not the same. So stay, stay warm, stay safe, everyone. Don't go anywhere if you don't have to. So I'm very excited about that. Um, it's a new class uh, that she started, and so I'm going to send over some information on me and then they're supposed to give me kind of a list of questions of things to discuss because I really don't know what we're gonna chat about but it will be exciting. <laughs> Hi Hutch. 
So we just checked in with Alethea. I am sniffly for some reason. I sure hope it's nothing else. Hi, Hutchkins. You're not one of the birthday boys right now, but you're too cute to just walk by. I know. Mirror. So this is Hutch Serval. We just saw Alethea Serval. Yeah, I know. My goodness. Are you trying to tell me you did not get breakfast? Because I think that's a lie. I think that's a lie. No, we're on our way to see birthday cats, but here you were hollering at me. All the hollering at me. I don't know that we're actually, I don't think we're getting rain today, but it is definitely getting gloomier by the second and windier by the second, so. I don't know what's going on with the weather today. So I'm on foot because I will probably be sitting for the rest of the day. So I'm just trying to move around. But my goal is to head over and see Simba and Jasmine and any of their neighbor friends that are out and about. Kali will be somewhere in her roof section. She might be already in a den. So I do apologize if there's a lot of wind noise. I got my hair cut yesterday and I have bangs again and I'm like out here in this wind and I'm like, I can't see anything. <laughs> I should have brought some hair ties. Ugh. We got Cheesy over here with some Mallard friends. He was such a hero yesterday. Yesterday morning, Sarah C and I were feeding uh, all the big cats and we came by and there's Mr. Cheesy. Cheesy duck. He was raised with Mallards, so it's really cute when Mallards come in um, randomly but anyway there were a bunch of them yesterday and it looked like two males were kind of fighting with each other so cheesy got in the middle of them and then the male was picking on cheesy and then I had to go rescue a duck and I was like what has my life become <laughs> I'm chasing ducks away from other ducks that I've raised but he was such a good boy he was like don't you pick on him and <laughs> stepped in the middle I'm like, this is why you keep getting yourself injured, though, and then we have to put him in the recovery cage for a few days, so anyway, he's doing well. Making friends. We have no idea to know whether one of the mallards that comes back every year is quackers, which is the entire reason why the cheese ducks came to Big Cat Rescue, because they came in as tiny little yellow fluffy chicks and were raised with a mallard and then the mallard flew off and did his thing and they stayed. All right, where is a Simba? So Simba yesterday while I was volunteering, he was the cat that we celebrated yesterday. That is is a guesstimation on his age during his medical exam it was discussed that he could potentially be um, older than that oh now I see him I was like where seriously is this tiger go say hi so it's his hypothetical 13th birthday but he could in fact be older than that based on blood work dental his eyes specifically. But stress can make people age in weird ways too, so it probably happens with cats as well. So I wanna check in with him. And then you guys know he is now officially one week out from having been neutered. 
and he's clearly very relaxed. Hi, buddy. Can we approach? I don't want to startle you. Hi, kiddo. I don't want to startle you, but that's adorable. So roughly about 13 years old. This is Mr. Simba, just <laughs> chillaxing. So yeah, actually I'm seeing you guys discuss um, his enclosure and the enclosure sizes. A very loud bluebird, blue jay, right above my head. Sorry, guys. That is a very loud, loud bird. But I should have walked you guys. I could probably still do that if you're interested. It's been a long time since I've done home tours. Um, but that's because we started changing up where everyone lived and <laughs> what cages were attached to what. So I kind of stopped that, but um, I could definitely show you guys Simba's full enclosure. But I'm pretty sure you'd rather stay here with him because look how cute he is. <laughs> look how cute him is. Oh, sweet boy. This is a full belly. Got my morning um medicines and now he is just relaxed he still has at least another week where he's not going to have access to his swimming pool but you can see he's not stressing too bad about it um unfortunately he has still messed with his tail a bit um for the most part he's been this chill but he does have a little bit of um anxiety still and so that just may be a behavior that stays uh to my knowledge he's doing far better as far as not wanting to just straight up eat afton <laughs> which he usually does but he is also as you can see still on his um pain meds not only for the limp that he came here for, but also because of his neuter last week. What's killing me are his back legs. Like, look, like his one foot is there. His other one is just totally like sprawled out behind him. <laughs> and then, yeah, the little, the little curled mittens here in the front are too cute. Why are you too cute? You are super zonked out. Super duper zonked out. So silly. Well, it looks like you had a great birthday. You might have partied too hard is kind of what it looks like, but good for you, buddy. Look at that fluffy belly. Look at that fluffy belly. I mean, he did barely even opened his eyes to recognize that I was here. <laughs> I fed this route yesterday and Simba definitely has the biggest diet of the whole route. So that is a very full belly tiger. Um, so yeah, people that are interested in, um, we'll give Simba tiger's cage example. Since I'm on the back side here, we'll go all the way down and I will kind of show you the view of his open air, which like I said, for two reasons, he doesn't have access to our high wind gusts today. So he would not be out in the open air anyway, but also because of his procedure last week, he can't be submerged in water. Um, for at least 14 days. So you can see that his doors are down. There's a safety pole there. That is the universal sign, but you're not supposed to open this door. So he has this huge open air section. And it butts up next to Miss Cully's open air section. So he has all of this with a Verkata camera down there. He has his swimming pool right over there with another Verkata camera. 
he has this giant platform. And then there are these two doors here that when they are open, he has access to and from the roof sections to this large open air. So this is just his open air. This right here is uh, what I just walked through is we can close all of this up and it's where Simba is able to walk himself when it's his turn out to our vacation rotation. But when it's not in use, the keepers are able to walk through here because there are many, many closed doors. <laughs> so he has this smaller roof section here that does have a big concrete den. And then a staircase that goes over a tunnel from that smaller section through here. Um, I'm gonna cross over and show you the other side of where he was. So he is tucked on the other side of the den over there. This is kind of an overview. So he can walk through that tunnel into this section and there's another big platform with another Vercata camera. He's got obviously some big boomer ball toys. He loves that big tree stump mainly to hide and stalk you from behind it. So this is the bubble he's currently in. Here's his other platform, his other camera. And there he is again, just from the opposite side. You'll see that dens like this, we've closed off the entrances. We would never want a giant tiger to somehow try to get themselves squeezed in to a smaller den. So he hangs out on top of it. He has plenty of um, other bigger dens, like the one down there that he can go in. So this one was more for like when bobcats and cougars and such lived in there. So this is his main feeding lockout. This is where he has breakfast every day. So you can see he obviously ate breakfast and then zonked out because <laughs> he's such a good boy. So you will see that this door is also down. This is only down for cleaning for safety. So as soon as his cleaners come out, um, they will do an extra water bowl that I'll show you guys on the other side and then they will open this door and then he'll have access to another area that I'm gonna show you. So when he does come in, he could walk through this tunnel here. And then he can turn this corner and head right through there over into all of these sections, all the way down to the staff office. Got to get this gate closed really quickly. So with feeding lockouts, when we go to change out the water and clean it and all that, we can close that guillotine door on it and it keeps you safe from the animal coming into that space while you're cleaning because you do have to stick uh, brushes and sometimes your hands in so we never ever put our hands in when the animal is around so you can see there's another Vercata camera here and that he has a water bowl here and in order to dump that and refill it safely that is why we keep that door over there down until the cleaners have done this bowl and then he gets full access so yet another Vercata camera here. I think Simba wins for most cameras on one cat. And you'll see those big red toys. There's two more really big dens over here, as well as one here. So if we're counting bubbles, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, roofed bubbles and then one large open air 
and we consider like each section that might have a guillotine door you can close to be a bubble and those are usually you know anywhere from 1400 to 2200 square feet depending on the bubbles so all right so that is Simba's home enclosure let's go find this birthday girl so today we're um, celebrating Jasmine's guesstimated 12th birthday. We think she may be the youngest of um, the witness protection cats that came in from Ohio years ago. It's just our Jasmine and Duchess left at this point, but we think she was probably the youngest of them. Just need to locate her. So I guess another quick example is there's a platform back there. It's a little hard to see from this angle. There's a Verkata camera down there. So there's actually two really big bubbles back in that area. And then this one here, actually there's, yeah, two. One's way bigger than the other, but so that's bubble three. This is bubble four platforms, dens, and pretty much all of them. She's got some water lockouts. We don't feed her in these two. We feed her in the one far farther back and farther away from Simba. Let's see where this girl is. Yesterday she was right in that corner. And I'm not seeing her there today. Oh, she is in this back corner next to Kimba. There's a tiger girl. So there's her tunnel systems that then leads her over to a massive um, section with a smaller bubble attached to it. Hi, Kimba. Are you and Jasmine hanging out? We gotta pay our tolls for Kimba. Gotta say hi to that boy. Hi, kiddo. Hi, Kimba. I think today might be your two-week mark, bub. Does that mean that you might get your swimming pool back? Mr. Kimba was also neutered a week prior to um, Mr. Simba, so... Yeah, that means it's been two weeks, bubbies. Afton went by on a golf cart. Now he's like, what's well, happening? <laughs> Something happening. <laughs> All right, so go see the neighbor girl. Here, Miss Jasmine. Hi, Jazz Pants. I think we're just going to get super sleepy tigers. Super sleepy tiger time. Super sleepy. Do you even know I'm here, or is this part of your trickery? Hi. Hi, honey. Hi, baby girl. Hi, baby girl. Happy birthday, honey. Happy birthday. He's just a youngin. He was just a youngin. So this is Jasmine. So the reason I tend to say guesstimated age is because when you are in the rescue world, you can find out very little real information a lot of the times because you know people had animals illegally and transported them illegally and you know all kinds of just terribleness in that dark world and as much as we want to pretend that it's just totally fixable like we have to stay on it <laughs> let's just put it that way we did get a law passed to definitely help stop the the breeding but I know people are still gonna do it and we've got to stay vigilant on that but for Jasmine's case she was um, <clears throat> it's hard to say I personally feel like she was probably a cast off from cub petting or she was a whoopsie um, when it came to breeding white tigers. White tigers don't naturally exist very often in the wild. It's uh, pretty much caused from inbreeding. So to say 
it's never happened in the wild. Well, that's not true, but can you just go find one in the wild on a regular basis? No, um, they're definitely more man-made. Uh, they just breed tigers back to their own relatives until they get the right combination. And then the cat comes out white, usually cross-eyed with a ton of health issues. But Jasmine is a very light color, in my opinion, compared to, especially when you see a cat like the Guatemala Boys or Hoover, very, very orange. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that, honey. It's okay. We're just here for your birthday. I know. For some reason, you're the one that's always got it out for me. She <laughs> She doesn't like when you crouch near her. <laughs> anyway, so with Jasmine, oh, well, this is going to be a much better angle anyway. Yeah, this be a better angle anyway. Ooh, she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Now I'm sorry. Now I'm sorry. This is why we have a three foot rule. <sighs> So anyway, she's a very like watered down color. You can see she's got a ton of white on her. She is also slightly cross-eyed, a little special in some ways. So I believe she was probably um, dumped because she didn't come out as a white tiger, so. She's still beautiful though. She also has a very unique chuff, definitely the most unique chuff on property. Besides Priya's mooing, <laughs> it's not really a chuff. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, Jasmine does have a short tail and like half ears, but I think that might actually be more from trauma. Like another animal took those from her. I don't know that she was born that way, but again, it's hard to say. So she was probably cast off from either a breeding scheme or a cub petting scheme. And then when she was too big to be used anymore, she ended up in somebody's backyard collection in Ohio. And then, um, you know, Ohio has a pretty rich history on learning from a pretty terrible mistake, uh, the Zanesville massacre in 2011. And so the state of Ohio confiscated Jasmine and Duchess and the late Jinx and Sapphire. And they came here um, and lived as witness protection cats for the four year litigation between the state and the previous owner. And in the end, we were able to keep them here as their permanent home. And uh, yeah, so the best we can do is sort of guesstimate ages by the information we were given. And that is why we believe she's about 12 years old give or take so you can see she's nice and spunky so <laughs> all right lady my knee can't handle me squatting like that anymore anyway do you have another neighbor out how about another ohio witness protection cat should we go try to find your neighbor let's go try to find your neighbor yeah thanks for waking me up don't need coffee around you. It was so silly. Um, Aria is like the sweetest cat in the whole world. And she shouldn't be because she's been through unimaginable uh, abuse and neglect. But <laughs> I was cleaning with Jordan last week. Jordan was an intern that did all levels, all five levels, and then actually moved here and is a master keeper now. And so we were cleaning and Aria was in heat. And when she's in heat, she's very rubby, rolly and um, sweet to basically everyone. But he, she came over to the side and she was being all sweet. And Jordan was like, oh, I never get to see her like this. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, she, if I'm around her for too long, she jumps at me on the side of the cage. And I was like, Aria does that? I've never seen her do that to anyone. Um, she gets excited about Max Tiger, but like, I've never seen her be anything but just 
Rubby and Rolly and Chuffy. And he said, yeah, when he was being trained, there was a day where Aria kind of ran up on him and his trainer and they sort of like jumped a little bit because she came out of nowhere I'm trying to find where this girl is. So I think she has to be all the way down because she she's still in Max Tiger's uh, sections. And basically, Aria never forgot it. And so still to this day, Jordan says that Aria will like try to sneak up and run and jump at him. And I was like, well, heck, I have the identical story, only mine is with Jasmine. I was cleaning, gosh, years ago, it was many years ago, um, and it was pouring rain, and I had my rain jacket hood up, so I didn't have great peripheral. Now again, I was at least three feet away. Oh, hi, hi, knees. Oh, that's a good spot. And Jasmine thought that it would be hilarious to run up beside me and jump on the side of the cage and splash water and muddy paw prints at me. And I made a sound because I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, like I got startled. And she has never forgotten it. So to this day, if I linger for too long, she absolutely will jump at me. Here's our Aria girl. Here's our Aria girl. You getting ready for all day naps? All day naps. Isn't she so pretty? Well, if you guys joined in late, we did see Alethea and Hutch, and then we worked our way over to see a very precious Simba tiger. Uh, we saw a little bit of Kimba and a little bit of Jasmine and Aria now. So that's probably actually where we'll wrap up for today. You can rewatch this live at bigcattv.com. Yes, yeah, she's starting to have that head. Yep, there we go. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. So thank you very much if there have been any donations. I really appreciate that. And I... I'm very thankful to all of you guys that help out in the comments, answering questions. So it just goes to show that you just, you can never think you know the cats because they're wild animals deep down inside and they, you know, they all treat us differently on different days and you just have to be cautious. Jasmine, I can always see it's like the, her pupils move in a way where I'm like, all right, here it comes. Like, and I just brace myself for it because I know it's happening. Sapphire actually used to do the same thing. So I sort of feel like Jasmine and Sapphire may have potentially been related or something or maybe share some kind of parent because they both had that trait with me, which I just thought was really interesting. So... Well, thank you guys. Hopefully if you're snowed in, you can have a relaxing day just like Aria here. And you can always go stream any of our videos, bigcattv.com. Do some online shopping, why not? Bigcatrescue.biz. You've got a few more days. If you have not sponsored a cat in January, you can do that and then get entered into the sponsorship drawing where you will get a prize from Priya. So thank you guys. <laughs>